So big topic today that I want to dive into. We got a number of topics we're going to talk about today. Um, but the setup that I put into the video message that went out to all of you for registration was to open this discussion of how we have all changed our businesses to deal with COVID. And I, I have no doubt, because I've had conversations with many of you about this. Um, we've had a couple of good uh, webinars that have been done. I think Zarco did a webinar a few weeks back on, on this topic. Uh, I'm sure the FBAA has probably done something as well on this. But I would love to hear from you as to what you have done as a result of all of this. So how have you changed your business? Um, maybe just either put your hand up or, or first one to the mic uh, gets to speak, but I'd, I'd love to hear more about, about that. So please, somebody take the lead. Who wants to have a go? Wow, none of us have changed our businesses. <laughs> I wanna hear from brokers, Warren. I wanna hear from brokers. So all of you guys, I know, all you type A personalities, don't get on this thing and act like you're not, you know, you want to speak. Was it Sandy? You got your hand up. I think I saw you first. So let's hear it. Take yourself off mute. Take yourself off mute. Down bottom left corner. <laughs> um, and to be honest, the, may, the only real difference I've noticed is obviously not meeting up with clients, which I've always done a lot of face to face. Um, and I always make a point of meeting up with them when it comes to signing up loan offer docs, because it's just easier that way. And you they're not going to get have to get reprinted. And I found that really, really frustrating not to be able to do that. And even though I'm coaching clients and saying, please let me know when you get your loan offer docs and we will do a Zoom or we'll do a FaceTime and I'll go through them with you. And they panic and they get them and they just sign them and send them off. I go, oh, they, we sent them last night. And I go, and so many of them have had to be redone. <laughs> so what have you done to address that? Because that that is a really... You know, that's a yeah. serious issue and it's something that we wouldn't have had to have dealt with uh, in prior years because we can see people and have them come into our office and stuff. So what have you done to address that? Um, well, as I say, only only that I've asked them when they get the docs, please let me know before they sign them and we'll FaceTime or they can send me screenshots of pages that they're not sure about. But please do not sign anything until we've had a conversation. But look, probably 50% are, are doing that and the others are just are uh, panicking and sending them. And, and, and a lot of the reason they're panicking is because the bank's SLAs have been so slow that we've had docs sent, sent out very late and they've been really worried about not meeting settlement. So they've just kind of signed them and got them back in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I don't know what else. If somebody can suggest some other thing other than saying, please let me know when you get the docs and we'll go through them. <laughs> Somehow well, together. it's um, it's a good question. Does anyone? Well, first of all, does anyone have it? Because I, I have something to say about it, but I'm not going to say it uh, yet. I'd love to hear from <laughs> someone who might have a great idea as, as to how to address that. Is there anyone who is having a similar problem to that that has a solution? Anybody? Steve's hands up. Anyone else? Steve, you talk enough. I'm going to put <clears throat> put you on hold for a second. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, Steve, go for it. <laughs> okay, um, so it's not so much a solution. Uh, a few weeks ago, as a JP, I received a instruction set from the Attorney General's Department that went out to all JPs regarding the uh, witnessing of signature documents. Um, had a situation, my next door neighbour is an Aussie broker. And he rang me the other day and said, oh, Stephen, I've got these clients. They need to uh, have their mortgage witnessed. And so I, through in, with his intervention, I entered a uh, Zoom meeting with these clients. Uh, I got them to show me their ID on the screen. I watched them sign the documents. The, my neighbour went and collected them from the front porch of these people. They left the documents out the front. Um, he bought them, stuck them on my front porch, called me, Stephen, I put them on your front porch. I picked them up, witnessed them, put them back. He's come and collected them. And so there is a, a workaround. If the one thing that the um, Attorney General's Department has said is that as a JP, currently I am not able to witness a, an affidavit. Um, 
but in terms of mortgage documents, as long as I witness over Zoom uh, or FaceTime, whatever, um, the people's actually signing the docs and I see their ID, then I'm allowed to witness the, uh, or sign as a witness. Back and to you, you have, you have to put the little phrase at the bottom as well, I'm a JP too, and I've had to do it over Zoom and you have to physically watch them hold up their ID. And then when they send it to you, you have to put the little disclaimer that it was witnessed under the legislation that allows electronic witnessing etc the little clause underneath your your signature so yeah. yeah look that's i've done that too but then that's fine if you're as a jp witnessing i'm just talking about loan offer docs where the client doesn't necessarily understand all the documents it's just you know st george documents they don't need a jp or anyone to witness but they're just they may be miss ticking a box or miss one guy first home buyer didn't put in the correct bsb and account number for his um settlement proceeds to come out and that sort of stuff and if he couldn't make the digits fix because he didn't realize that he didn't have to put all the zeros in and it wouldn't fit the bsb and all the zeros and you know and he just went uh, and, and end up missing off the last instead the last two digits of the number instead of missing off the zeros <laughs> Just so is anyone things. else finding things like that? Yeah. that that's a really interesting story and you know it's it's the basic things right like how, yeah. how can you not know how to put your BSB and account number in right. Like we're, we're well beyond the days where uh, everything was done, well, I guess on paper, but certainly they would have had to put that on plenty of forms, right? But uh, has yeah. anyone else found uh, similar um, frustrations like that that wants to share something like that with a solution that you had for it? Just jump in. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting those that can do it with the banks that allow it to do e-sign, to do electronic signatures. Mm. So we know at least they're not missing something. Um, but in some, this was a young lad and mum and dad, and they just were completely clueless and they weren't savvy with the, you know, doing it as an e-sign either. So I said, we'll just get them mailed to you. Um, and they're not local enough that I could pick up. I'm in a five, I'm in a five K lockdown zone. <laughs> So I couldn't go and pick them up or drop them off or have somebody else do it. Or <laughs> Very frustrating. Very frustrating. Um, and it I suppose those time sorts of things, well. well, it does add time. And, and especially if they stuff it up, that, that adds even more time. Um, yeah. What else, guys? What, what other things have you been doing to change the way that you are doing business? Surely we've got, what do we have in here? Some 30, 29 participants. Someone must have something that they're doing differently. Jump in, tell us. Drinking more coffee. <laughs> true that, true that. <laughs> Slash wine. Come on, all you brokers are type A personalities and I know you're driving your businesses hard. What are you doing differently? What are you doing differently? I'm gonna start picking on people randomly in a minute. <laughs> I'll do the lottery and just wherever the mouse lands, that's, that'll be you. Now, Warren, you had your hand up earlier about something. I'll give you the opportunity now. There you are at the top of the screen. What are you doing? Uh, thanks, thanks, BJ. Look, when this, when this all kicked off, we, we, we kind of swung into a digital model as best as we could uh, to see how that would go. It started to show some significant promise. Uh, we then decided to, well, in fact, we then got, um, elected onto the Mortgage Choice Board and the Chan and Naylor Board in the same bloody week, unfortunately, uh, which required an enormous amount of work. And so they've asked us to create a monthly professionally executed um, presentation. Um, everything we do at the moment, <clears throat> excuse me, is online on Zooms. Um, as the boomer in the room, I, I thought there's how do you sell a property to someone that you've never met, that you've never been able to engage with, that you've never been able to develop a decent rapport with? And I can say categorically that one is able to do that on Zoom, which I never thought would be possible. Certainly somebody of my age never thought that would be possible. So, and in fact, if anything, the clients prefer it. Uh, they, they find it very convenient. You know, uh, Mrs. Jones can be here, Mr. Jones can be there. We can get them together at the same time as opposed to, you know, sitting at the dining room table at seven o'clock at night. Um, so, so we have found that the digital model um, has worked very, 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 very well. 
Um, and so what we did was, uh, and the first one will be on the 5th of October, you guys will get a video with my ugly face on it, inviting you to come to those sessions where we can build a landing page for each of you. And so that if you invite any clients, we know that they're your clients, um, but they, they, they are absolutely fantastic. They've been professionally produced. Um, and so that, that has enabled us to send our message out in a, in a, in a very professional manner, um, in a non-salesy job. It's just an educational event as to incur what our panel are seeing and what our panel are forecasting. Um, and and that, that, that just been, uh, that's just been unbelievably successful. So we, we're very blessed that um, that strategy of sending out information in a professional form, backing it up with the ability to meet with people on Zoom uh, when and whenever it's convenient for them has been unbelievably successful for our business. And we are, we are very blessed to be as busy as we are. Fantastic. That's great. And who else is using, just hands up, I can't see everybody in here, but just on, on my first page, here, who else is using Zoom, Skype, or one of these other platforms to meet with your clients? Who's, who's doing that a lot? Hands up. Hands up. Keep them up for a second. I just want to see uh, on our second page. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, good. Good. That's great. And for those of you who are using those sorts of platforms, how is it going? Uh, are you finding like Warren that the clients like it? Do they, or do they not like it? Is anyone having a, a bad experience with that? Pete? Um, it could just, I first want to ask, uh, was there a quick question? You said that uh, the clients really liked it. I just wanted to clarify, was that that they really liked the, uh, the screen experience or they really liked dealing with people of your vintage? A little bit of both. Probably really. both, right? Um, Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, PJ. Uh, uh, I think you and I were standing in the same canteen queues about 45 years ago. So yes. uh, that's encouraging. Um, yeah. Now I've forgotten your question, uh, PJ. Oh, it was about clients engaging with this stuff. I think um, I, I think they are. And it's probably, you know, in, in reverse to the, the last uh, comment I made, probably the, uh, the, the the older generation struggle a little bit, but the reality is now had nearly two years of this stuff uh, and they're getting used to it and, and finding the convenience that comes with it. I think one of the, you know, the, the efficiency opportunity for us as well to be able to, you know, we can back to back meetings now, um, you know, switch one off and switch the other one off rather than have that half hour uh, travel or whatever it might've been in between. But to be quite honest, I didn't mind that, whether it was walking outside your office and going getting a coffee and then coming back or whether it was driving to the next appointment. It, it was good downtime for the mind. And I, that's one thing I'm really missing at the moment, but um, it's something you can still discipline into your day, which, uh, which I'm working on now. Because as you know, I like downtime. <laughs> yeah, Pete, I'm, I'm, yes, you, I'm you, you love the downtime. And that's actually a really important point. And I, I want to just, uh, oop, I need to let some people in from the waiting room. Uh, two seconds. Yep, they're in. Um, you raise a great point, Pete, and that is no longer do we have that travel time or going to the city or whatever. I've personally found in, in my business that I miss that. And uh, so you're right. You've got to schedule that something in, in the middle of your day or wherever to give yourself, give, just give yourself a mental break because, man, we could all work. 10, 12 hours a day, easy. I mean, I find having a little nap at my desk during the day works really well. Darren, who's on this call, you know, he doesn't turn around a lot, so he can't see me having a little snooze, but uh, he's in my office, uh, actually on the other side of this wall. But uh, anyway, I suppose that, you know, ingest a little nap during the day. Come on, you know, I'm 50 now. I, I, I've joined the over 50 club, so I get to have a nap during the day, right? Um, anyway, um, what else? Who else has found feedback on Zoom and that sort of digital thing. Have you found that that's dr driving more efficiency in your business or has it been an impediment? Anyone else want to share on that? Can I just, sorry, PJ, sorry to interrupt. And then I promise you this will be the last thing I have to say, but I'm going to very, very Oh, I somehow example. doubt that, Warren. Uh, no, 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 you, you, you can doubt that. Um, I don't blame you. Um, if I look at the, the example that we've got in South Australia and Western Australia at the moment, so we have BDM and sales consultants on the ground in South Australia and in Western Australia, and their clients are preferring Zooms. They can meet them face to face, but those clients are preferring to meet via Zoom, which is extraordinary. 
It is. I, I think we're on the cusp of a new world in terms of how we deliver our product and our service to clients. I really think that there's been a shift in that regard. Um, Zarko, do you have any feedback on that comment? Are you finding anything from the MFAA's membership that confirms or denies that? Support so um, it's often um, been a case that if something doesn't work, um, in IT, there's a, uh, there's a technical term for it, um, and it's called a pep cap, and the problem exists between chair and table. And um, people will often call me and say, oh, such and such isn't working. And I'll, I'll say, well, why don't we hop on a Zoom and you can share your screen and we can resolve it straight away. And then straight away, they try it again and it miraculously works. So it's been a very good um, intimidation technique to show that, you know, it's probably not the uh, website that's not working. So <laughs> Zoom's been good in that respect, Peter. Yeah, it, it yeah. truly has. Now we've got a couple of people with hands up. Greg, what, what did you have well, to say about Actually, all? Navjeet was first, so. Navjeet, what do you have to say about that? Where is Navjeet? Navjeet, where are you? Yes, guys, I'm here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> yes, uh, what was the question again? Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Mate, two minutes. You just had to pay attention for two bloody minutes. Um, <laughs> The question was around Zoom and um, I suppose how you're, uh, well, the conversation we're having is around Zoom and just digital means of communicating with our clients and whether yeah. it's been a positive or a negative in your business or are you doing any of that at all? Very positive, I must say. And I totally agree with Zaku as well. Uh, it's um, the screen share thing is working really nice. I mean, whenever you have clients, they're not able to understand anything. Uh, we can just jump on the screen, show them the loan repayments, the uh, you know the stamp duty costs and stuff like that. So you can show a lot of things. And in, in even within my team also, it's working really nice. I mean, we are doing a lot of sessions together, one-to-one -one group sessions, and uh, it's just wonderful. I mean, I would say the technology has played, we, we were actually underestimating and underutilizing the power of technology. And I think uh, we've all realized how good is that, that we can all be sitting at homes and doing all this, which we could never ever, uh, you know, think we could do it before, you know? So I, I think uh, it's a blessing in disguise for us, this COVID, uh, but we hope we get back to our offices. But uh, at the same time, I think uh, this has given us wonderful opportunity to work from anywhere in the world, uh, have offshore people working for you. It's just uh, unbelievable. So yeah, um, yeah, working really well for me. Thank you. That's fantastic. And what a wonderful endorsement too of technology. And I think you're absolutely right about a number of the thing, these things. I mean, you know, um, Alvin often comes to these things as, you know, clearly Sandy's at the beach right now. Alvin's usually at the beach. Um, Zoe's up in the Northern Lights. So, you know, clearly we're working from around the world at the moment, which is fantastic. Greg, what did you have to say about all this? Uh, well, some of it was similar to what Zarko and Nadji just said. Um, and as a broker, yes, certainly uh, those we, we can sort of guide our um, our, our clients. Uh, and but as a tra as a trainer, because I'm training, helping, assisting, and training brokers. Um, but with assisting them, uh, that I'm able to go and help them with their clients. And the clients see we have a team. It's not just the broker sitting in the room all by themselves. Mm. Uh, and sometimes maybe I can sort of help things along, if uh, especially with a new broker, if they're sitting. Uh, on their in their table in their you know at a dining room table at a client's place. If I've got to go there, I've got to be there for the whole hour or two hours and the driving. Um, and I only need to be there sometimes for a little bit of that. But with the Zoom, I can just get involved where where I might need to. Um, but very importantly, the clients see that there is a team uh, mm -hmm. and and expertise with the broker, but also behind the broker. Um, and with um, and I think you know our role is often to to be in some ways, training clients uh, or, or guiding them, but sometimes it's training them with things like, you know, how to write a BSD number, for example. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the same with the brokers, uh, in helping brokers, exactly as Zarko said, I can, one, I can either demonstrate and then get, and then with my share screen, uh, and, or, and then I can get them to do it while they're sharing their screen. 
uh, or I can guide them with even just filling in some of the like a you know a credit proposal form or a fact find or whatever it be. Um, and we can actually look at stuff rather than just talking on the phone or actually having to go and spend physical time together, which is a lot more, um, you know, and, and with clients, I think it's easier to get the time to match up people. As I think Warren said, sometimes the, only one client can be there and that's that's not what you need. So with Zoom, you can set up a time at one o'clock in the afternoon or while they're both having lunch at work or, or whatever. Mm. Or now. But even, even in times when we did have, um, didn't have lockdown, you know, two people are at work, but they have lunch at one o'clock. They can do the session at that time and not have to wait till seven o'clock at night when they're both home and then one doesn't turn up. So there's been a lot of good things about it. Yeah. I think I described this as the, as the uh, positive uh, consequences of, of COVID and everything that's uh, happening to us at the moment. And um, again, I really do think that a lot of these things are going to enable us to evolve our businesses and probably enhance our service proposition, which is sounding like Sounds like many of you are doing that. Um, just as I wrap up this segment, one of the things that I want to just quickly say is, and I've talked about this before, I think uh, Nissan may have highlighted this technology in previous sessions, but who here is using Loom, L-O-O-M? Put your hands up if you use and keep them up for a second. Loom, who's using Loom video? Yep, Zarco is, okay, not too many hands up. So for those of you who don't know what Loom is, go to Loom. I think it's .com. I'm not sure, but just Google Loom. Um, a few of you have described where you'll do a Zoom. I know there's a lot of these Zoom, Loom, they all sound the same. Um, where you are uh, sharing the screen and you're you know, going through something with a client, maybe doing that product comparison or funding comparison, whatever, live real time with a client, which I think is great. It's awesome that you can do that. One other way to do that, and I've implemented this in my business, and Darren, um, I, I might get him to share because he's pretty gun shy on the video, but we're going to break this uh, little problem. Uh, he's laughing. But I've said to him, and I do this as well, I will do a loom with the product comparison, the funding um, comparison, walk through all of that and send it to the client. It's efficient. I can do it when I am ready to do it. And of course, if you send that recording to the client, they can review it. They can rewind, fast forward, do whatever, and really get the point that you're trying to drive home. And it's such a powerful thing to use in your business. I would really encourage all of you to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, just speak to people like they're your family and they're your close friend when you're doing these videos and you'll nail it. And they will love it. If you think they love doing the live Zoom with you right now, just think about the power of you and a, and a video uh, loom that you send to them. Is anyone who had their hand up uh, that's using loom want to have any feedback or anything else to say about that? Just jump in. Yeah. So um, where loom comes in is if you have um, two of your clients having the same um, misunderstanding when you've tried to explain something to them, chances are you're going to have 24 others. So two is enough of a pattern. So you recording how to actually get over that hump will save you 24 interactions. So you're almost thinking two moves ahead of what the client may anticipate as an issue down the track. And even if they never have that issue, the fact that you've got that little, if you have any problems, click on this video, I'm sure it'll probably help you. It's just a one, a one extra way. You're better than the next person they're going to deal with in this whole cycle of transactions. Great commentary uh, on that. And that that's another nuance of Loom. Uh, I also use that in my business where I send the client a link to something as an instructional type video, because you're absolutely right. Uh, as Zarco highlighted, if one person can't fill out their BSB and account number on a form, as in Sandy's example from earlier, there's a good chance there's a few others that may not or you'll want to walk through with them how to sign their mortgage docs. So just think of it this way. If you did a video on how to sign mortgage docs and forwarded that to that client a few days before they got their docs, hopefully you would expect that if they actually watched it, uh, that it would reduce the chance of that client making a mistake. Um, so driving efficiency, I guess that that's the theme of, and what I was hoping to draw out from all of you around that question of how have you changed your business was really to see how you're using technology to drive efficiency. And that's such a powerful combination of technology uh, and efficiencies. And I know Nissan's going to, as I alluded to in my video, he's gonna deep dive into some stuff 
today on that topic to help you drive efficiency. So if you take anything away from this meeting, uh, this IFBF meeting today, uh, it would be, my, my suggestion would be to spend some time this weekend, some downtime thinking about how you can drive some efficiency in your business using technology and maybe one or two of these things that we're talking about today. So thank you for contributing during that session. I really appreciate that. Um, we're not gonna move on to our positive alternative lender session. Now, I believe we have Steve, um, is it Oswide Bank is with us? And who's here from Oswide? Tracy. Yes, hi. Lovely, Tracy. Well, the floor is yours. Tell us what's happening at Oswide. Um, there's lots of things happening at, uh, at Oswide. I've got a very um, small presentation, if it's okay for me to screen share. Yep, let me just give you that capability. Two seconds, multiple. There you go. You should now be able to do that. All right, just bear with me and I and will. And while Tracy's loading that up, Nissen has uh, put the Loom address into the chat. So for those of you who um, see a little message in chat, just click on that and there's your, it's loom.com. So I'm sure all of you can okay. remember that. So let me just find this for you and hopefully this will work okay. Hopefully everyone will be able to see my screen. Okay. Is that coming sure up? All right? Yes, it is. Beautiful. All right. Well, look, thank you very much um, for the invitation to come and have a chat to you today. Um, normally uh, your B the BDM for New South Wales is uh, Vicky Minaris. She's uh, unfortunately in another um, workshop this morning. So um, I said to Steve that I would pop in and say, hi, uh, I'm actually the head of third party. For Oswide Bank, so um, it's always fun for me to come and have a chat to uh, to the guys that are out on the front line. Um, and I have had the pleasure of meeting a few of your members um, previously at a uh, a Christmas function, I think a couple of years ago now. So, um, and I remember them having a great time out on the dance floor, um, which was fabulous to see in the good days. Um, so, really, just for uh, a lot of you, what I wanted to do was uh, share a bit about Oswide and some of the things that we're currently doing. So, um, I'll just give you some background. And uh, actually, as a matter of interest, we've just announced our results uh, today. They've gone to market, um, and we've had a great year, which is fantastic. So, but a little bit about us um, we are actually Australian owned bank, publicly listed on the ASX. Um, we became a bank uh, in about 2015, um, and a lot of you may have had some dealings with us previously um, when we were known as uh, Wide Bay Capricorn. We were a building society um, originally, and um, those origins really stem from the desire to help everyday Australians achieve that goal of home ownership uh, up in Bundaberg, um, formed by uh, a couple of esteemed businessmen at the time um, specifically for that purpose. Um, so we've been around now for about 50 years and uh, currently have just over 3 billion in assets. Um, we've got a branch network through Queensland. We've currently got 19 branches, predominantly up through CQ um, and uh, North Queensland. We've got uh, quite a good spread of branches as well through the Sunshine Coast. Um, and we've got a couple of branches um, in around uh, Brisbane and uh, North Lake, so just out of Brisbane. Nothing down in um, Gold Coast as yet, but um, as always, we're sort of looking at those options and what we can do. Um, we are very committed to um, our broker channel, um, with 75% of our inflows um, being generated by our broker partners in the last financial year. Um, we've actually spent the last two years working on a broker journey review. Um, we did a lot of work uh, with an external group and invited a lot of our brokers in to give us feedback. And we've been working on uh, implementing a lot of initiatives, all straight off the back of feedback of brokers over that period of time, um, which has been great. So we've delivered 33 of those initiatives so far in the last sort of 12 to 18 months. Um, and we're about to embark on another round of um, 12 initiatives under what we're calling a broker value proposition uh, initiative. And they'll come through over the next 12 months, which is pretty exciting for us as well. We do offer a full suite of banking products. And obviously we've got a very strong commitment to our communities as well. Um, some of you may know, um, we took on the sponsorship of the Queensland Maroons. Um, for State of Origin. Um, I know most of you guys down there are probably blue supporters. 
Um, but the good thing that for us that came with that sponsorship was um, a, a very big commitment to junior rugby league as well too. So getting in on that grassroots level um, as a part of the commitment to the community. A um, little bit about our BRM. So I've got six BRMs at the moment. So broker relationship managers. Um, we are very hands-on. Um, we like to work with you um, and work through those scenarios before you're submitting the deals, just to make sure that we can contribute to um, a process that's as efficient as possible. Um, they have got lending backgrounds and they've got good credit knowledge, which is great. They have immediate contact with not just the um, the uh, lending analysts in our um, operations centre, but also straight through to the credit managers. Um, and we've got the ability to have a chat to them uh, to see if there is uh, where there is anything outside the square, whether we can do something there for you. Um, we've also got obviously BRMs located in uh, actually physically located in sun, uh, central Queensland, Sunshine Coast, Brizzy, Gold Coast. Uh, we've got um, Vicky down in New South Wales and we've got a broker relationship manager in Victoria. Um, I'm actually recruiting for that at the moment because he has um, just moved on and accepting a, 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 a very well achieved um, promotion in another area. Um, so really we've got good coverage all around um, Australia. We've got representation that covers uh, WA as well too. Um, I guess what we do differently um, as a non-major, um, we've got some niches. Now our fixed rate loans um, have got really the same features as our variable loans. So 100% offsets, redraws, top ups, construction whilst fixed. Um, we do uh, overtime and allowances for essential services at 100%. Our essential services also um, cover Department of Corrective Services. Um, it actually covers nurses as well. They're classed as essential services. So a little bit different um, to what other lenders will include as essential services. We do holiday and short-term rental income, um, which includes Airbnb, um, which I know a few of the lenders aren't sort of doing that, but we um, are doing that short-term rental. Um, that's a policy we in introduced a little while ago. Um, we are an FHLDS panel lender. We're doing FHLDS, which is the existing homes and the new home guarantee. So NHG, they call that, um, which is for the construction of new homes. We're not participating in the um, family home guarantee, uh, which is the one that um, is the um, scheme that allows for 2% uh, deposit. And that's purely and simply because it doesn't meet our policy requirements. Um, we do do up to 70% LVR for a maximum four units on one title. We also do that whether you're purchasing or whether your clients are purchasing, constructing or refinancing. So I know that's a little bit different um, to a lot of the others that are out there. Um, we're doing investment lending for both P&I and interest only up to 90% LVR, including the LMI. Uh, we do allow for cash up to 3 million to be used as security. Um, and we do find sometimes that uh, that's a very positive advantage for um, particularly parents wanting to do parental guarantee. So taking cash as a security rather than the mortgage over their property. Um, our SLAs average between five and eight business days, and it depends really on how clean that file is when it goes in. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. We have implemented um, a validation and verification system, which is automated um, through ComputerShare. Um, and obviously, um, the cleaner that file is and provided we've got all of those supporting documents, the faster it gets through. Usually, um, validation and verification can be completed on a file in two hours, which means that we are then getting that file much faster. Um, and if you're doing upfronts um, with us, uh, then we're usually, we have that file completed in about five days. Um, the BRM team, as I said, is available for the brokers um, and they're knowledgeable and responsive to queries. So they welcome uh, any email queries that you may have um, and also on the phone um, to talk to them as well. So just looking at this really quickly, um, so with the fixed rate loans, I just wanted to expand on that a little bit. So 100% um, offset accounts, but they, the clients can have up to 10 accounts on those fixed rate loans. Um, they've got the ability to do unlimited additional payments um, without any penalty, as long as they don't pay the, the loan out during that fixed rate period, or they don't try and change some of the terms and conditions of it or do a variation on it. 
Um, they can access the redraw of the advance payments um, without any cost, uh, without any cost or penalty. Um, and the construction loans, this is the one that's really popular at the moment. Um, construction loans, they can fix that construction loan from day one. So they're not having to wait through a variable um, loan uh, time frame until it's construction's finished. And then once it's finished, then they can have a look at the, um, the fixed rate. It means they get the benefit of the current fixed rates for the duration of that, um, of that term. Because um, quite often it can change with some construction uh, timeframes now taking well over 12 months. Um, so we do all of our progress draws through that construction period. And whilst it's in uh, that construction drawdown phase, it is actually on an interest only basis as well. Um, and the other thing that's great is some um, clients can do their top ups um, on fixed rate loans. So um, often we'll find that if they're doing the land settlement, they'll fix the loan when they come along to do the construction, then they just do that as a principal increase uh, and away they go. So it's very convenient for them. Are you doing something? Sorry? Um, sorry, that was obviously not a question. No, carry um, on. I think that was somebody's just mic was not, uh, was not muted. So carry on. No, that's fine. Um, so one of the things at the moment, we've got a couple of campaigns going. Um, we've got an investor campaign on uh, for uh, all of our brokers at the moment. Um, these are the current rates that we have there. This is the LVR 75% or less category. Um, what we're doing with this as well is that we also have a bonus offer of a 0.2% discount um, off those rates if the clients also look to bring across their owner occupied home loan at the same time. So this has actually been really um, popular for clients and they can see the long term benefit of that 0.2% discount um, on the investment loan, as opposed to some of the cash back offers that are out there um, at the moment. So we found that this has actually um, become very, very popular as a comparison. And particularly where a lot of, uh, a lot of you guys are avoiding some of the cashbacks as well because of um, the inherent problems that come along with that with uh, SLAs um, taking longer because of volume and so forth um, and the delays in getting those cashbacks through for your clients. So something to think about definitely um, in terms of those rates in that current campaign. Um, and the other one, of course, as I mentioned, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are involved in with clients that are looking at the first home loan deposit scheme, um, but we have been a panel lender now. This is our third year um, with NIFIC uh, in this space. So we are um, actually very well versed and very experienced in this. Um, we are one of the only lenders or the non-major lenders that um, provides the ability for you guys to reserve your client's space prior to having to lodge an application. So many of the panel lenders uh, for the schemes require you to lodge a, a pre-approval um, as well as a reservation application. We actually get you to lodge your reservation uh, application for the client along with confirmation of their eligibility criteria. It means that the clients have got that peace of mind very quickly because they've got their space reserved uh, and then we get you to lodge a pre-approval uh, application so that we can um, then hold that position for the clients for 90 days um, and then that allows them to go to contract with some peace of mind around that as well too. Obviously if your clients have got a contract we'll reserve the place and then go straight through to a full approval for you as well um, but it is the key to being able to secure those places very quickly. Um, we've got a separate FHLDS team um, that works within our LOS area um, and they're usually pretty quick. They process those reservations very quickly, um, usually a couple of hours turnaround time, again, provided you're giving us the right documentation to support that. A um, couple of things to remember with us, genuine savings. So we require 5% for LVRs over 85%. And obviously all uh, first time loan deposit schemes um, require that minimum 5% deposit. Um, that's part of uh, NIFIC or the government's requirement. Um, now, we don't include uh, rental ledgers. Um, we don't accept those or look at those as a part of genuine savings. Um, we've also, uh, part of our policy, um, PAYG casual or contract employment, um, minimum 12 months with the same employer. Um, PAYG full-time or part-time is a minimum of six months with the current employer. Or if um, they have two years continuous employment, same role and industry. 
Um, in all cases, though, not on probation. Um, we have done some exceptions to that, but there would be need to be some mitigants. So again, if you have a situation where you might have a client that's on probation, depending on the circumstances, do contact your BDM and let them have a chat to our credit manager specifically about that. Um, servicing for us, you must have a DTI under six um, and an NSR over one. Servicing calculator, the quick qualifier is actually very easy to use um, and uh, we'll give you those details very quickly. Uh, and again, um, the, the BRMs are quite happy to run you through a servicing calculator if you haven't um, done one before. Um, and again, one of the benefits of technology, I was listening to all of your conversations with interest about how, how uh, things have changed for us. But for us with Zoom, um, we definitely use Zoom a lot with our brokers if they're having any difficulty with an application in apply online um, and they're having some problems there or they're not sure, we will actually jump, uh, jump on Zoom and share screens with them um, and work through that. Same thing with the servicing calculation, um, rather than trying to send a file and talk through that on the phone, now with uh, Zoom it makes it very easy for us to step you through that process. So um, the guys are really loving Zoom and being able to give you more of that hands-on um, guidance and coaching around uh, how to work with us. Um, land and building, um, the title must be registered. Um, at the moment, the construction must include driveway and boundary fencing, but I can tell you that we've just had approvals in our policy that will come out on the 1st of September where that will no longer be a requirement. So we won't have to have that all in one line in a contract, um, but titles still need to be registered. Um, what else have I got there? So, so just some general policy stuff on LVRs, um, purchase and construction maximum um, for uh, purchases is 95% inclusive of LMI. Um, as I mentioned, 5% gen savings over 85% for FHLDS. Refinances, debt consolidations and equity releases, maximum LVRs 90% plus LMI. Um, just be aware that interest rate changes once LVR exceeds 90% may um, apply because of our interest rate bans. Um, and as well, investment, interest only p &I, purchases and constructions, refinances and debt consolidations, all to a maximum LVR of 90%, including LMI. Um, what else? So a couple of things working with us. Um, we all loan applications are submitted via apply online. So we don't take any manual or um, uh, copies or anything via email. Everything must be through apply online. Um, supporting documents are now emailed to us. Um, we've got an email address that we use and we've also got some comprehensive guides for you guys available on our broker website. Um, it's important that you note it is not a person that's doing our verification and validation. So it is a computer. So um, it can't um, look at things subjectively. It's got a set of rules that it looks for in validation and verification. So um, I do know that some of the feedback from our brokers, they didn't realize that it wasn't a person. And once they realized that it made things a, a whole lot uh, easier because it's quite black and white. Um, every application is assessed by a lending analyst in laws and, uh, and actually through credit as well. So we don't do auto decline. So we don't scorecard decline. We don't do anything like that. So we do take every, uh, every application on its own merits. Um, your file gets assigned to a lending uh, analyst as soon as it comes through validation and verification. You do have access to speak to them. Um, that's our contact number for laws. Um, and all of the calls are answered. And I can tell you that um, it won't, you won't be there waiting very long for somebody to speak to you. I've seen some of the, um, the timeframes that you guys have been waiting on hold to, to, uh, to talk to support services. So um, that definitely won't be the case with us. Um, once um, your loans are approved for your clients, uh, we use MSA National to issue the documents. Again, we've moved to the electronic um, distribution of documents. We use DigiDocs, which is MSA's version of DocuSign, um, and uh, our brokers receive a copy of those documents as a part of the, um, the electronic process. Um, we've got upfront valuations available through the property hub, so we're using the same system as a lot of the other um, lenders that are out there at the moment. Um, we do um, do a, um, a cost recovery method or a 
Um, I guess we supplement that, but there's a cost recovery method if the application is not received within 45 days. So if you're doing a desktop um, and an application doesn't proceed, the cost is uh, $49. Um, and if it's a short, um, uh, um, a short valuation, then it's a $99 um, cost if the application doesn't proceed. Um, that's the only contribution that would be made by the broker. We do require electronic VOI for applicants. Um, at the moment, currently, we're accepting two formats, which is zip ID, so that's face-to-face, -face, um, and Australia Post. Now, there's no charge for the customers to complete their VOI through Australia Post. Um, and the other thing I can tell you as a part of the whole, um, I guess, technology thing at the moment um, and the broker value chain proposition, um, we actually do have um, a project uh, group at the moment looking at um, IDU. So I'm very hopeful that in uh, within the next 30 days or so, I'll be able to announce that we're adopting that um, as a remote solution um, and that uh, we'll be able to roll that out for all of you guys. Um, now, pre-approvals, we only do pre-approvals for FHLDS and NHG applications. Um, they're data-driven assessments and we fully assess them upon conversion. So it's very reliant upon the data that you guys put into that application. Um, and the, the thing that we do encourage you to do is to talk to your BDMs if you're looking at doing pre-approvals, just to make sure that you're running all that data through and your quick qualifiers are all um, have all been completed correctly as well. Um, other products that we offer, we've obviously got uh, a low rate credit card um, and that one is geared to the RBA rate. Um, we've also got low rate personal loans, unsecured renovation loans. Um, they do insurance products and there's also a personalised broker customer onboarding process for all of your clients. Um, and the other thing that we have as well too is uh, obviously that digital technology with Apple Pay Google Pay, um, mobile and internet banking that's available for your clients in their normal banking, um, in their normal day-to-day -day banking. Um, how to stay in touch. Um, so we've got our loan origination services number there, um, 1300-077-127. Um, a general email for brokers at auswidebank.com.au, which is monitored. Um, or you can also uh, email laws if it's in relation to um, an application specifically. Um, our website there, oswidebrokers.com.au, and then the specific extension for the FHLDS page. Um, the FHLDS page uh, for Oswide is actually really comprehensive. It's not just a case of us referring you back to the NIFIC um, website, which I know does happen for a lot of the lenders. Um, there's a lot of guides in there. All of the documents that you will require for any of your first home buyers um, to go through the process of... Um, undertaking uh, an FHLDS loan. They're all there for you and some frequently asked questions as well too. So it's a good place to start. And then of course, as I said, come back to your BDM. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. So hopefully I didn't take too long. Um, and if anyone has any questions. Yeah, does anybody um, have any questions for Tracy other than uh, can you get that credit card badged in uh, New South Wales blue? No, definitely not. <laughs> Unfortunately, I almost I almost had to kick you into the waiting room after you you know <laughs> that you sponsored the Maroons, but I'm sure we have a few Queensland supporters. PJ, that's one. that's Manly Warringah Maroon. <laughs> yeah, I can it. tell you though when we do come down to um, when we do come down to uh, New South Wales. Uh, for the origin, and we, um, we've had a few of the brokers come along with us. Um, we do very kindly uh, have some merchandise that has maroons on one side and obviously the blues colours on the other. So uh, we do accommodate that for... Um, Does anyone buy that or take it with them? I, I can't No, no, we give, it, we, give it to, uh, we give it to... Um, yeah, absolutely. We gave it to the brokers who came and were fortunate enough to join us last time. Right. Sounds good. All right. Anyone have any questions for Tracy? Right. I do. One quick question, Tracy. A lot of good stuff there. Thank you for that. Um, the person you got to, had a renovation loan unsecured there for Oswald clients only. Presumably, that's for somebody that, uh, on the basis you've already got that uh, property uh, mortgaged. What does that loan look like and price like, and what's the um, assessment process? 
Um, oh, wow, that's a really good question. So that doesn't actually, we don't do that through broker. Um, it's available for our existing clients. Okay. Um, I can't even give you the price because it's not a product that I get involved with, but I'm very happy to send you some information uh, on that, Peter. Um, and it would be done essentially through our customer hub. Um, yeah. But that's it's personal loans aren't something. We do actually want to get involved in that with brokers and do an offering to brokers on our personal loans. Um, we've kind of floated that idea with um, with a few of the aggregators, to be honest, and and wasn't a very, uh, a very overwarming um, uh, reaction to it, I guess. I think that, I think they think that their brokers were sort of more inclined to uh, be focusing on the home loans. But I mean, if you guys, if you guys believe that uh, there's some benefit for you um, in that, then certainly um, I know that my, my chief customer officer is keen to put that on the table. And I do know that all of our uh, new agreements um, incorporate uh, personal loans as an option um, for us to go forward with in future. So um, be happy to take any of that advice on board. Um, look, look, my interest is not necessarily, this is only my view, not necessarily to write it as a broker, but to have it up my sleeve for a client. Uh, and that's why I ask about the assessment process. If for one of your existing clients, it's easy for them to get 20, 25,000 or whatever it might be. Yes. Um, that might be a simpler process to direct them towards and maybe assist them, but let it be run by the your customer centre uh, to allow them to do something that we may be uh, may not really be in a position to assist them with in any other way. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. No, look, and it is an easy assessment process as well. And one of the things that they do have is the customers can, if they wish to, jump online and we've got an online uh, application process. Um, that simply comes through. It's managed by our customer hub team. They've got a, a lending team in there um, and it's the same analysts. Um, so it's exactly the same credit managers that come through that are working on the home loans. So, um, and the process is, is, is very similar in regards to the qualification um, and servicing. Might be a good target for high LVR, but a strong servicing client. Oh, look, to be honest, um, yeah, you're 100% right in regards to that. And the other thing that we also um, use it for with our existing clients is under the FHLDS scheme, um, applicants who have a home loan under that scheme can't change it. So you can't do a top-up loan to it. Um, they, once it's set, they essentially can't do anything else to it. So um, definitely in regards to that, where we've got you know, young clients who they'll buy a property and then they'll think, oh, wow, you know, we, we really want to clean the kitchen up and we want to put a new kitchen in, they will actually then use that renovation loan um, to do the kitchen. So um, now I do know that the rates are very good. I just don't know exactly what they are, but I'm happy to send through some information for you guys. Um, I can send that through to Steve or whoever you'd like me to send it um, to to pass on because um, you're 100% right. It is, it is advantageous for that for the exact reason. Very good. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Tracy. That was a good question, Pete. Uh, we are at the halfway mark, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to take a five-minute break. Go grab a coffee, stretch your legs, use the loo, whatever. Uh, back here at 11.35 for uh, round two. See you shortly. Thank you very much, guys, for the opportunity. All right, we are back. There we go. We're almost halfway through the day. How excited! How exciting is that? Now a couple people have come in. Let's go ahead and admit. All right, so uh, welcome back, everyone. Hopefully, you got a coffee. I got one brewing here. My little French press. I feel much lighter now. I've had a little toilet break, so that's nice. And uh, let's talk to some of our wonderful sponsors. Where's Rock? Are you back? In the room, Rocco. Are you here with us? Let's see. Is Rocco back? Yeah, I'm back. He's Sorry. here. Trying to, trying to find the right buttons to press. Uh, pressing the buttons, mate. That's always the biggest drama. Pressing the buttons. What's yeah. happening to your manager? Well, plenty of uh, look, um, I'm sure everyone's the same. We, we're quite very, very busy. Lots and lots of inquiries. Um, we, we, I suppose, with all the uh, cashbacks and all the you know, those sub two percent interest rates, uh, people are going to the uh, majors first. But credit has tightened up, so we're getting, I suppose, a second bite of the uh, deal, which 
then puts us under pressure. Um, so, but uh, plenty of work. Uh, I'm sure the rest of them out there are saying the same thing. Uh, been, any uh, um, any specials at the moment? You got any any uh, particular niche you're hitting? Um, look, not really. Uh, we, we've opened up our visa, temporary visa clients. Uh, so we've got a program that caters for them. Um, so as long as they can prove that they'll get residency, um, take them on. Uh, our self-managed super fund is still going well. Um, starting to see some refinances in that area, which sort of expected in the uh, when the audits get done. And now they are uh, looking at the, there's a vast difference in rates between us and the majors. But uh, in all honesty, we've got, we've got full spread. It's a full spread. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, got a purchase where a barrister has been stuck at the major for six weeks. Uh, He's already moved into the property, so he's gone in under license. So we're uh, trying to get that settled for him. But, uh, you know, fairly big spread of uh, work, so which I'm happy about because, you know, we're predominantly in that self-managed super fund space, but um, we're getting a good spread of work. Good. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. And for those of you who uh, haven't done business yet with Rocco, give him a call. Uh, he's very helpful and will look after you really well, clearly. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, who else do we need to hit? Uh, I think I saw Eliza's camera's not on. Uh, what other sponsors do we have in the room? Where's Warren? Is he floating around in here somewhere? There he is. Warren, what's happening at Meridian? Uh, PJ, hi, mate. Um, frantic. <laughs> frantic is the <laughs> Frantic That's is the, the word of the day, I frantic. I, say. I mean, which, uh, which I have to say is, is an absolute blessing. I mean, after, you know, I don't know, maybe three, three and a half years work, um, we finally got onto the mortgage choice panel, the Nectar Mortgages panel and the Chan Naylor panel in the same bloody week. So if you want to know why my throat sounds so <laughs> awful. Um, it's not COVID. Sure, uh, no, and I'm sure you'd realize it's, PJ, it's, not, it's not a big deal for me to talk all day, every day. <laughs> um, so look, we're, we're very blessed, very, very lucky. Um, it, it has been frantic. We've had, uh, sites come and go in a week. Um, I mean, it is absolutely crazy at the moment. Um, thankfully. Um, but again, it, it, you, you, you know, you're looking at very, very well-researched, uh, properties and suburbs through our investor panel. Uh, we, we, we sent out a, uh, we, which we've never done. We, we, we led with a product last week. We sent out a product that we had in Albany Creek. Uh, you know, this is a suburb with 81% owner occupancy, 41% professionals, yada, yada, yada. I won't bore you with the details. Um, you know, it, it, it sold out in eight days. You know, it was only 10 townhouses. Um, sold out in 10 days. We've just had a, a couple of clients, uh, revalue the property which is just settled in Arana Hills. Uh, you never know what a bank's going to do at the minute, as I'm sure all of you know. Uh, and those townhouses showed growth of 70%, which is, I'm sorry, $70,000, which, which is extraordinary. Um, absolutely, I mean, they just settled. Um, and we know from the sales either side of that particular site in an inferior site that sold for a heck of a lot more, that, that, that's probably a fairly low ball valuation. So we're very blessed. I mean, it's, it's lovely to have um, an accounting firm like Chan and Naylor on board. Um, people tend to listen to their accountants. If they say jump off a roof, they jump off a roof. Um, so um, yeah, look, mate, we, we're, we are so under the pump at the minute. It's incredible, which is why I said we've, we've had a take on staff in Melbourne and, and South Australia and Western Australia and Queensland. Uh, it's just been crazy. So we're, we're very, very lucky, very blessed, good, very good. blessed. And I know uh, a few of the IFBF guys do a bit of work with you. Uh, I think Steve, uh, who else at the moment is uh, working with you closely? Um, so okay. I think I think the, the most recent uh, IFBF members who, who come through, uh, Mike Mazar came, came, came through with something. Um, Steve Dinty, as you know, um, has, uh, has had quite a, quite a few successful um, um, transactions. Um, 
I, I wish I knew off the top of my head. Who no, that's okay. I, thought, I put you on the spot there. My, my who apologies. else? Who but else come through? But but who's ever come through has had a very pleasant experience. Let me let, let me put it to you that way. Um, they haven't had any nasty valuation stories. Um, they've had very quick vacancies and tenancies and decent yields. And I'm sure Steve will attest to the fact that his his clients are very very happy. Um, as was Mike's. I mean, Mike's client was gentleman from Ghana my god that was difficult I adored the man I just thought what a what a beautiful individual um, and we had to get him over the line and we did um so yeah look so far so good and um I look forward to more IFBF members trying to get an understanding of our pedigree um the more the merrier good good so if you haven't talk to Warren yet and I Warren I must say I've been meaning to uh flick you an email so you have my permission to give me a call today or when it's convenient, even next week to have a chat because I'm seeing for what it's worth to everyone in this room, I'm seeing a lot of clients coming through now who are wanting to get pre-approvals and things to buy investment properties. So, um, you know, having that solution, having a partner that you can refer that to, if that's what you want to do, earn something from it, you know what, why not? Uh, why not? So if somebody's going to earn a commission, might as well be you. I yeah, think. look, PJ, the bottom line really, mate, and as, you'll, as those who read my LinkedIn articles or read in my next article, you know, 74% of investors buy one investment. Uh, and that's because they cock it up. You know, they, they, they allow their emotions to take better of them or they get duped or they can't hold. Mm. Uh, those are the three reasons you're going to lose money in property. Um, so, yeah, look, the... the, the, the the conversation they're going to have with any of the Meridian consultants is very educative. There's no headlock bullshit. Uh, sorry, there's no headlock stuff. Um, and uh, as I say, these the, the, these professionally uh, videographed events, which will start on the first Tuesday of every month on the 5th of October, um, uh, all of your IFBF members will get an invitation. We build a landing page for you with your branding. It looks like it's your gig. Um, and they've been fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So I hope we can get a few of the IFBF members on board with, with, with that series of presentations. Awesome. Sounds Thank really you. good. Sounds good. Thanks, uh, Now, you're welcome. Uh, now, Eliza's not back unless you are there, Eliza. If you are, just pop your camera on. Um, Ozlones, Greg, what's happening with you guys? Take yourself off mute. Take yourself off mute. Down left corner. There you go. <laughs> Talking to myself. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you know, Ausloan is about supporting brokers. So I just sent out a question, uh, which you can see in the chat. But basically, uh, I think we a lot of us struggle with trying to get a clear screen on our Zoom. And maybe Nissan might talk about this on his session. But I, I can never seem to get it. I put I change the I put lights everywhere. I do all sorts of things, and all I get is I get weird. Right. So in helping all the other brokers on the screen and anyone else I might be training, uh, how do you get yourself to have a clear picture? So there's PJ looks really clear. And this always looks clear. Uh, Zarko all looks, always looks very clear. Um, Zoe looks clear. How do you get to have a clear, clean, not shadowy screen, uh, face? Well, maybe Nissen will have something to say about that. I think it probably has to do with your camera and whether it's uh, new or new-ish. Uh, that would be my first protocol. I use a Logi, uh, whatever the most recent whiz bang one, yeah. and, and I've got a, a light right next to me here to cast more light onto me. Um, so that would probably be my first two suggestions on that. Um, what's happening at Ausloans, though, other than camera problems? Uh, well, uh, we have a number of brokers who have come on today. Uh, with, uh, Babix there, he's a new broker with uh, everyone knows. Brad, he's new with us. Who, who on board. is Babic? Babic, that guy. Uh, and Herman Vargas, they're welcome. Oh, Herman. Yeah. I think this is your first nice IFBF you, meeting to come to. And Srijana is uh, looking. Will be on board next week. So hello, awesome. Srijana. So welcome to our new brokers. And maybe I don't know whether Herman, you want to say a little bit about. Uh, how you're finding the assistance of Osloan's broker group? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. So as Greg said, this is one of my first meetings. Uh, my experience uh, has been pretty good, pretty positive, um, especially if Greg has dedicated a lot of time and effort to to train me. I'm new in the, in the industry. So yeah, a, a lot to learn. So um, I was 
uh, very lucky that I have deals coming through to me. So that helps to, to learn, but yeah, but he, he has helped me to, to get most of those deals through the process and I helped me with the compliance and, and all the questions and the stress that comes with trying to get the deals through. So I've yeah, been very positive. And Shrujana, welcome. Uh, would you like to say something? Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Srijana. I recently <laughs> uh, joined in Oz Loans and I have two, more than two years experience as a loan writer. So I took my time to see more scenarios and to learn on more on compliance and everything. Now I'm get set to be a broker and uh, lucky to be part with Oz Loans and Greg has been a great support from day one since I've been. And thanks, thanks everyone. And uh, Looking forward to work with everyone. Beautiful. Thank Fantastic. You. Sounds like you need to change your uh, smoke alarm battery too. <laughs> we, we have so a great no team, friends. team with us and we, it's, it's growing. So that, thank you. <laughs> cool, cool. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. Uh, now Eliza's back. What's happening? Uh, Deposit Assure, any new updates? Writing lots of biz? Um, I think I touched on the sort of our massive move to digital last time, but just to reiterate that everything that we're doing is now digital from the signing, from the payment of the apps, all of that's digital to the dispatches digital. Something that we're finding, we're seeing more and more um, is, as we're adapting to clients going to digital auctions is we're doing a lot more auction bonds, so open bonds um, up to a maximum purchase price and clients being able to take that to um, an online auction as well and just that speed, they kind of decide quite often that you'll you'll all be familiar that everyone kind of wants to decide they want to go to auction in three hours time or something like that. So we are seeing a lot more of that um, as the market changes. So just keep that in mind that we can work at that speed with that turnaround time and that we um, there's no hold up. We've really adapted to COVID, I think, from the last lockdown, but we're just seeing that more and more um, currently. Awesome. I, I was in one of those positions where I had somebody tell me like two days, you know, before Saturday, oh, and we're going to go to auction. And uh, I rang you up and we had a good chat about that. They did end up needing a bond, but, you know, it was great to see how quickly you guys could respond. So kudos yeah. to you guys as well. Thank um, you. Now, I don't know if we've got, uh, I don't think Prospa is in the room, but uh, just quickly, if you guys haven't seen the email they sent out about uh, like a summary of all the business support stuff that's available, uh, check your emails, maybe email your Prospa BDM. They put together a really good email on all the different uh, support mechanisms that are currently available across Australia and the States. That was really helpful. I put that out in, um, in a private chat room, I, I, which I have for my clients on Facebook, and I got some feedback immediately on that people really appreciated that so use the resources that people send out to you i guess is uh, is what i'm saying there uh credit fix is anyone from credit fix mariana is not in the room no i don't think so all right are there any other sponsors that i haven't noticed that are in the room that want to quickly give a shout out uh oh yeah zoe yep hey, there you go you're behind my camera so i couldn't see you it's a good thing you're flailing around zoe what's happening at Trailminders? it's really exciting stuff stuff we've just taken on two more loan processes and we've got another two hopefully coming on board next week we're finding that um people are really appreciating that we have australian based loan processes that they can just use for a one-off deal or to do all of their loan processing for them um, right through from scenarios right down to just submissions only and we're rolling out an online um uh, accessing booking system so you can just book online very easy to use um, so that'll be something that uh, will come out in the next few weeks as well so lots lots of great stuff happening here fantastic that's good to see and hear that uh, that you're doing well uh, now for those of you who aren't paying attention to the chat you might just have a look at that real quick Zarco's just posted something in there around a transcendental meditation um, I guess that's maybe an actual no, it's dental meditation it's actually from um, Deposit Assure. I think Eliza oh, wanted to talk about that. Oh, okay. Yes. What's this all about? Oh, there you go. Yes. Sorry, We're just doing about a tag team. Nice. I yeah. love that. Um, so really exciting um, that I do want to share with you is we are running um, on behalf of Deposit Assure. What we're doing is we're doing a seminar on and the 
it's in there on the 1st of September and it's an introduction to transcendental meditation. We thought it was extremely timely um, in the current circumstances and my director Etienne has personally experienced a lot of the benefits of that and we um, at Deposit Assure feel really strongly about it. We think it's a really fantastic tool. I know that everyone's got a lot going on, they're really stressed. So instead of doing another webinar that's um, work focused, we really wanted to give something back as well. So all of you guys are welcome. Um, the numbers are looking fantastic. We think it's going to be really exciting, but you can register um, in the chat. So thank you very much, Sarko, for popping that in for me. Appreciate <laughs> it. We all got each other's backs here at the IFBF. That's cool. Uh, certainly, um, you know, meditation is not something I've ever really done. Um, but the times that I have participated in stuff like that, I've always gotten benefit out of it. So thanks for um, offering that to all of us and to the industry as well. Uh, I think that probably hits everybody uh, in terms of sponsors. So um, thank you for all of those updates. So let's move on. I know Nissan has just been hanging out to tell us all about technology and his tech corner. So Nissan, over to you, bud. Tell us all about um, what you've got for us today. Uh, thanks, PJ. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, look, um, no doubt that COVID has pushed us all to do um, to work from behind our desks. And to me, I think we all been trying to uh, tell the lenders or the industry, look, you know, we want to do this, um, you know, automatically or, or uh, using the tools. And we always have a bit of a hiccup from the lender saying, no, now COVID is here and I'm taking COVID as a positive thing to me to use tools and make my life easier in dealing with clients or working with lenders or BDMs. Now, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, conferences, uh, tools that you, we can use. And most of the ones that I use, it's usually uh, Zoom or you have Google Meet from, from Google and also you have Skype. And um, the reason why, because everyone, you know, so the needs that the Zoom actually taken the large chunk of the industry, uh, whereas Google um, used to have other uh, uh, tools, which they abolished those and then started with Google Meet. Uh, same thing with the microphone, uh, Microsoft always have uh, Skype, uh, where they used to have um, you know Microsoft Teams, where they're not really paying that much attention to it. But let me share my screen uh, with you and I answer uh, uh, Greg's question, how you can actually make it a bit better uh, looking on the screen. Uh, let me know when you see my screen, please. Yep. yep. It's all right. Okay, where are we? Where did it go? Okay. Why did it change? For some reason, it changed. It went to. You just need to select the screen you want to share. It can be a lot. I, I did, but it. Easy. Okay, so let me stop new share screen. Okay, I did that. Share that. Come on. You're sharing a Word document at the moment. I know I didn't select that, but why is it going to that for some reason? You could just share your screen screen and then just put on whatever you want. It's amazing. Why is it doing that? Uh, that's not good. Advance. Why is it not sharing what I want to upload to computers? Uh, I find if you uh, kick the desktop really hard sometimes. <laughs> uh, that's my saying. I used to do that. <laughs> okay. Why is it not working? Oh, you want some IT assistance from me, Lisa? I think so, man. I, you I, guys I really should have a, have a Zoom separately and sort this out. Uh, <laughs> I turn it off and turn it on again. Why is it? Turn the Zoom off, you mean, and turn it back on again? <laughs> No, that's the only tech tip I've got. Uh, Google. Just click on the word icon uh, <coughs> down the bottom. I know, and it's not um, closing for some reason. So if oh, I go we, where? We've just got your client list. Oh, that's not client list. Um, <laughs> okay. Look, I don't know what's happening. Um, Record leave. <laughs> Sandy, yeah, that. you. I was. I was about to say something myself. This is uh, our our tech guru who's uh, <laughs> failing with tech at the moment. But hey, you know what? It's one of those things, right? Sometimes tech yeah. doesn't want to work for us, no matter how good we are with it. I've had so, circumstances where the tech just goes, not nah, not cooperating today, and you got to be able to roll with it. So, um, hmm. 
Um, I don't know what to tell you, Nissen. Maybe I can share my screen if it's something you want me to pull up. No, uh, look, I mean, I can talk while I have, um, you guys can just follow it up. Um, it, it makes it easy that way, but it's just the other uh, programs. Um, look, I, I can just direct you and you can guys, guys can go on uh, from, you know, what I'm going with these. Um, uh, what do you want brought up? Now. Okay, so the first thing that you got to look at and on the top right corner, you have view. And then you can select which view that you want to see, whether you want to see a speaker or you want to see a gallery of other uh, other participants in the meeting, or, or you can see the full screen. So if you guys can click on all that, you can see that. But the main thing that... Oh, I'll just share my screen. Oh, you are. Okay. Okay, so go to, go to um, full screen of Zoom. Yeah. Why I'm trying to. There we go. Come on. Open up Zoomy. You're going to have some problems with me. Well, this one doesn't want to close. Uh, done safe. Okay, closed. Excellent. Mm. Now let's see. Uh, where are we? Why is it not going to Sorry, PJ, are you. Do you want to bring the full uh, page of the Zoom PJ? What like, are you actually the meeting? The meeting. So what I want to talk about is the uh, the icons from the bottom of the screen, starting from the left to right. Share screen. Okay. Come on. Um, you are sharing. <coughs> I'm sharing. Right? Is it working? Well, you're sharing your screen at the moment. Sorry. No, so okay, guys, go go to the bottom where you have the mute button, the microphone left at the bottom. Um, if you uh, th that's where you click on the mute on unmute if you wanted to mute yourself. But the thing about these two icons on the left, you have a video and a mute. The arrow up, you click on that. That's pretty much the settings. So you can um, attach a new microphone if you like to your um, computer, to your machine, and then you can select that microphone. Um, or if you want to add uh, videos, um, uh, cameras, uh, Greg, as that's a, that was your question. So you can purchase one of those uh, Logitech uh, webcam. Um, you can buy them from online from eBay. They're about 100, 150 bucks. They're really good ones. And then you can just add it to your computer and you'll have a better uh, screen. When, when you go to um, the, the settings, uh, especially the camera, you click on video settings. Do you want to do that, PJ? Yeah, it's not. It's sharing the uh, the screen of everybody and not what you want to show. Maybe Zoom know. doesn't let yeah, you. I think you can't normally show those things by. You have to do a print screen and use it as a just as a. But I'm, I'm not. A Word document or something. No, you can. Usually, you can. But it's just today. It's not. I can't even share my screen. But anyway, guys, if if I if you sort of like not following what I'm saying, is just stop me and I can go back and and uh, explain it better. But the main one that you go to those two little icons, you have mute and stop video. You click on those and you click on the settings. You get to that screen where um, uh, you have a general video and everything else. So Greg, for your question is if you click on a video. Are you guys seeing my screen now, by the way? Uh, yes, yep. we can. But and is yeah. everybody yep. on it? Okay, yep. so now this thing's up at the top, right? So there's your mute, stop video, et cetera. Should be at the bottom, uh, it's at the top. At, at the bottom, yes. So where do you have my video, uh, Greg? You have um, a, a mirror to, to my video, and then you have touch, a touch up of appearance, and then you have uh, the light, a touch, um, adjust the lights. Can you see that? This is where you can actually fix up, you know, uh, the side to side banner, uh, background banner, or you can do a bit of a touch up like uh, a Photoshop, uh, fix up your face if you like, you know, pretty much, uh, um, uh, one of these presenters before they go in front of a camera, and then you can adjust the light if you want an automatic and everything else. That has um, made a difference. It does. It does. And, and the other things, um, where, where do you have your face? You need uh, also a green screen. Um, you can buy one of those uh, pull up green screens for about 200 to 150 bucks, and they're about one and a half meter, which is very, very good. Um, the other one is while you're in videos, if you click on advanced. And then you can um, have more of a settings that you need to um, uh, fix up. Um, 
you can uh, go with the other uh, icons like audio or share screens or chats. They're all there to, to, for you to um, work it out and to set it up to the way that you need it. Now, the other one that you need is, where is my Zoom now? Okay. Why is that playing? Are you guys seeing my settings? Uh, we only see, I can only see Zoom join meeting sign in. Oh. That's all I can see. Mm -hmm. um, participants, um, it's, a, it's very easy. You can click participants and, and you can see who's part of the, uh, the meeting and uh, you can actually um, use the uh, again the up arrow you can invite other participants if you want in the meeting the other one is a chat where actually you can um, uh, write anything you can send the links of uh, uh, of, of the websites or, or url the only things you can't do you can't attach documents or videos to to the chat share screen which is so it's not working we, we do not record Reflection, er, sorry, reaction is where um, you don't want to say anything, you don't want to interrupt the speaker, where you can actually um, uh, select any of the emojis and, and uh, clap or a thumb up and, and everything else. The other ones I was going to show you is where's this one going? Uh, chat. The other one I really wanted to show is a bit of a um, if you go to video settings and you go at, at advance. Uh, video saying sorry background filter this is something you can want you want to play around with and, and have it differently um, you can actually down the bottom of that screen you have uh, studio effects um, you can you know play around with this and then just have a bit of fun add um, eyebrows um, add mustache for the male females you can add uh, makeup uh, lipsticks and, and everything else um, it, all there for you so you can have a bit of a fun with your clients if you like if you know them so well um, you know, Zoom is actually been very, very helpful. You can record a lot of things. Um, you know, constantly they trying to fix it up in a way so people can have a good experience uh, with it. Now, because Zoom has been taken a, a big chunk of the market since the uh, COVID, um, a lot of other competitors they came along, uh, Google, Microsoft Office, and, and a lot of other CRMs. Now they have a, a, a conference uh, meeting as well. The other one I want to mention to you guys beside the Zoom, it's a similar to Zoom, but it has a really good feature, which is um, Google Meet. Let me see if I can open up Google Meet. Uh, Google Meet, come on. It's not happening as well. Why is it not happening? Just, just while you're doing that, you're saying um, yes. something on, um, you mentioned the other types. My, what's Microsoft's one? Microsoft Teams? Uh, Microsoft, there's Microsoft Team. Yeah. But Microsoft. Microsoft. With Microsoft Sorry. Teams, they've got a really good feature where you actually can um, have subtitles. Correct. That's, that's with live. Google Team. That's with Google uh, uh, as well. You can do that with Google called mm. Captions. Yeah. Um, so and the you Google can get a transcript of it, I think, if you record it. That's right. So, so look, uh, uh, there was a question earlier of uh, saying, you know, uh, are you allowed to record this? Even though you can't record your meeting with your clients or you haven't or you've forgotten asking the clients to record the meeting, when you have the captions or subscribe at the bottom, you can actually record that and put it in your notes. So um, Zoom doesn't have that feature as yet. Uh, Google Meet and, uh, and uh, what do you call it, uh, Microsoft uh, Rooms, they, they, they do have that. But with Microsoft, they're actually not paying much attention to their Microsoft Teams uh, Rooms because they have Skype and they have changed Skype quite a bit. They actually made it pretty much like um, uh, what do you call it, Zoom. So you have a background you can change. With Skype, what I like about, I use Skype quite a bit for my team and overseas you can actually speak to your team and you can group the team so if you have uh, you know if you're in a company you have different departments so you can work you can talk to uh, a marketing departments today and you can group them and then you can talk to um, land processing department tomorrow and then you can group so rather than select them one by one you can group that so you can do that with with skype so every single platform has a different a bit of a different features but they're all pretty much the same the only reason that you need, so I, I try to learn as much as I can for with all three of them, Skype, Google Meet, and Zoom. The reason why, because sometimes when you're speaking to other people, they use these platforms. So if you only use to Zoom, and then they send you the other platforms, you probably, you know, get lost. Um, so you don't want to do that. So um, try to learn, they're all pretty much the same, and all of them for free. 
So for Zoom, you can do, for example, up to 100 participants uh, for 40 minutes uh, meeting, and it's unlimited. You do one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah. for someone like like Greg, you can you can use that with with his um, brokers. You can do as many one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings uh, with your brokers. But having said that, um, with 40 minutes, I have. I see. I'm on a free version as well, uh, or free membership. I've went over an hour and I didn't get cut off. So Zoom doesn't have that feature. Will cut you off if you, you know, use it more than 40 minutes. So I've tried that a couple of times, more than 40 minutes, and I, you know, I was still on. You try, or you, you find all these lend, all these uh, companies. They're trying to be part of the market because doing that, they they can sell you a lot of other uh, tools that they have. Um, now, Facebook, now they want to come out with their messenger uh, rooms. So they, they're coming out probably this year. And apparently that you can do a lot more than Zoom. So there's a lot of competition between these companies, which is making our life a lot easier. You know, um, try to use, it's a shame that I can't, I'm not, I'm not able to share the Google Meets and all that. Google Meets, you can do so much with it. The other things that you can do with Google Meet is, um, you can have two groups of a meeting. They will be separately. You can do that as well. Yeah. So uh, try to use these tools where, you know, it makes you, uh, I mean, it makes your, your business operations a lot easier. We talked about this earlier, you know, what has COVID has affected to our business. To me, I've been operating, not seeing the clients for the last eight years. Like I do everything, you know, from, from my office. I don't go and see clients. But in saying that, it saves me a lot of time by meeting the clients, driving to clients or clients coming to me. It makes life a lot easier. I honestly can do more work with these tools. Um, so always try to use tools. And if you ever need any tools to use, let me know. This is not my clients, as someone mentioned. These are the tools that I actually research and I can use. There's about 200 something list, 248 tools. So if you ever need any tools, let me know. I'm happy to go out and, and find out who's, uh, which one works for you. Um, at the moment, uh, we're working on uh, writing uh, blogs. There's a few companies out there you can actually uh, put the words uh, and they create a blogs for you. So with these tools, honestly, your business becomes better. You can run it easier and, and make, it, make you be more sufficient. The three tools I've mentioned to you, I'm going to send you uh, later on the... Um, um, what do you call it, this uh, print screens where you can go. The other things that you can do with Zoom, if you go to zoom.us, us, and then you log in, once you log in on the top right corner, there is uh, a tab called resources. And there's a, um, a, a down a, a list. And then once you click on the resources, there is video tutorials. You, you click on the video tutorials and it teaches you everything about Zoom. There's all the videos there. So try to use um, uh, Zoom as much as you can. If you have your own team, I would suggest you use Skype. Um, but if you have uh, people that you constantly, you're doing a lot of meeting with, um, you can use uh, Zoom. Google Meet is good as well. But it's only that captions different between Google Meet and Microsoft uh, Rooms. <laughs> That's it. If you guys need anything else, any questions, let me know. I'm happy to um, answer your questions. Fantastic. Nathan. Thank you. Uh, as you know, often happens with these things, technology doesn't cooperate when we really need it to. And uh, sorry, guys, it's not your fault. We'll blame it all on the uh, uh, on the matrix, I think. And I had it all prepared. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you know what, you can go do a loom on all of this and <laughs> probably will. That, we can send it out to everybody. So there you that's go. That's a good that's, idea. I'll do your, that. That's your homework for the weekend, mate. All Absolutely. right. Well, we got 20 minutes to go and uh, Stephen has been just sitting there patiently, just waiting for his opportunity to uh, tell us about the art of giving quality service. Part one, part one. So I guess that's alluding to the fact that there's going to be a part two to this, Stephen. Well, there's actually going to be about part three or four, but Ooh. Oh, my God. Well, we're going to have meetings filled up for the rest of the year then on all this stuff. So Absolutely. over to you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, look, over the years, people have often asked me um, why I, I am so successful at what I do. And um, obviously, a lot of it has to do with my good looks. Um, I was going to say, man, it's because you're so handsome. 
Um, it has to do with the way I give my clients. And you can make a difference. So generally within any sort of organisation, Hey, Steve, you're uh, just, just kind of pause you there for a second. Your internet connection is not uh, cooperating very well. So um, tell your uh, kids to uh, uh, get off the uh, Netflix <laughs> or go to another room where you have better broadband. Hang on, I don't know how. Let me kill that. There you go. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keep going when I've got too many devices on, yeah. Um, yeah, so starting again, so basically, yes, people only have contact with one person uh, within an organisation and that interaction can either make or break the business. And in this case, you are the person and it's your business. So what do you say, what do you do to, to create that lasting impression with people? Now, if the service you give is bad, your whole business is going to be discounted and, and the client will probably decide not to do business with you regardless of how skilled you are from a technical perspective. Now, on the other hand, if, if the service you give is of a very high quality, then the client will come back and use you again. So for even um, if it was a challenge for them, uh, if, if the service you gave them was really for most of us, we pride ourselves on the fact that we get a lot of repeat business and that is synonymous with the quality of the service that you're giving. Now, at the end of the day, it really is that simple and you can make that difference. So all service give, regardless of the job that they do, and that is they all deal with people. We deal with people. And chances are you may know the technical side of broking and, and lending, uh, and, and you could be an absolute whiz at it, but to really to look at improving your skills in handling people, and what's in it for you to actually learn that, how to, to get better at that people handling skills situation so and why should you improve the high performers in this industry all have what is they all possess excellent people handling handling skills now put my teeth there and there's quite a few benefits that uh you can enjoy or have it so hey steve hey steve can i just jump in here real quick you're you're fading in and out Try to shut down a few more uh, things what else <laughs> on your happened? computer. Or next time, uh -huh. uh, pay your NBN bill on time, mate. Yeah. No, I was actually talking to them last night. Um, we must have said something the to them that pissed talk. them off, mate. Put the video off and then talk. Maybe that might improve. Yeah. Uh, kill your video. I think that's a great suggestion. Kill your video. We, we know what you look like, mate. It's not going to make any difference. Why is it fucking showing me here? C1, C2. Try that. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Far away. Far away. Okay, let me go back to that. Oh. So, first of all, you enjoy your job better when you get better at handling people. Receive a lot more compliments and expressions of appreciation from clients. And it also extends to the way you... Still no good, Steve. I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, it's just we're getting about every... Um... That's frustrating. Third or fourth or fifth word, something like yeah. that. Yeah, that is frustrating. Um, hey, Maddie, hot, hot, hot phone spot phone your, phone, your phone, Steve. Yeah, hot spot your phone. I'm glad it's not only me. <laughs> I mean, it's Friday. It's, you know, day 
5,007 yeah. of lockdown. I think everybody is probably. And, and it is only you, by the way, Kojak. Let me, let me drop the other machine and see if that. Do, do a yeah. Loom video, Mr. Denty. Yeah, do a Loom. We can call it early, you know, and uh, get on with our day. Yes. Uh, Does Peter Clark need a haircut or what? Oh, <laughs> you should see me without my headphones on, mate. <laughs> I've got, you know, I had to shave my eyebrows the other day with one of the kids' clippers because I was getting all, you know, thingy. I'm like, gee, man, Christmas. For the no, love of God, can I get a barbershop open? Uh, this and I P don't have that issue. PJ, the, you don't, I'm not sure okay. that the 50 club's going to accept you while your hair's still that color, by the way. <laughs> I'll have to dye it gray, mate. <laughs> yeah, like I did. So, PJ, can you let me back into the room? I'll take it You're in the color, Pete. Are you coming in through a different mechanism? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Drum roll, everybody. Are you in? Okay. <clears throat> Does he now, need to get rid of the other one? You're going to need to shut. Echo. I'll, I'll put you in the waiting room. Bye. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Okay, how's that? That's better. That's better. Loud and clear, mate. Beautiful. All right. Reading you five by five. Hit it. <laughs> ah, let me pull up the program again. Uh, where's the program? I've got to find the program. Bear with me. Click. Click. Why do I send so many emails? Da -da -da -da. Bear with me. Why isn't it there? Okay. Oh, I know why it's not here. Oh, Lord. All right. Um, Mate, just uh, <coughs> extemporaneous. Oh, I know what I can do. It's all right. Bear with me. So do this and this and this with that. And okay, how's that? You can hear me now, hopefully. We can hear you loud and clear. Good. Um, so where do we get up to? Um, oh, that's right. So I was talking about um, with your people handling skills, dealing with the assessors in the banks and um, as you improve your people handling skills and appreciate there is a number of books that are out there that can give you hints, ideas, tips on, on how to improve your skill dealing with people. And in fact, PJ um, talked about reading books the other week uh, in, in one of the videos he sent out and it's, I've got to say, that's that's probably where I've gained all of my skills from, uh, just getting books on these, this sort of a topic and, and reading them and putting the uh, what I read into practice. And it really does make a huge difference with the, uh, the way you come across with people. And as I say, not the least of which being the assessors at the bank, if you can get people on side, you're more likely to get a positive response from them. And then in the case of an assessor, that means you get your loans approved. So there's uh, that advantage. Um, the other thing too, as you get better with handling people, you'll find yourself being less frustrated and stressed. And you'll actually also find that it'll help to reduce your workload because people are more prone to go along with your ideas and suggestions. You'll also find people will be less um, demanding of you as, as they warm to you. And um, they are thankful when you give a good service that's both quick and efficient. On the flip side, getting good at handling people means that you can remain more calm and courteous so that you don't stress out in dealing with people. And we've all had that problem before. Another serendipity in learning to handle people better is that it will help you in both your personal and family relationship situations. 
and they will become more satisfying for you. So yeah, you're right. it also means with people handling, it's not only dealing with clients, it's dealing with everyone that you come into contact with. Um, and for those of you who have a partner, it also means dealing with your partner. So as you know, um, that expression, happy wife, happy life, um, same uh, connotation with anyone that you come across. And that all stems from being really good uh, in, in, with handling people. It's, it really just comes down to that. Um, and true professionals are the ones that have that skill. And I'm sure you've come across people in, in your own life um, who you just instantly warm to when you're in conversation with them. And that's because they have good ha people handling skills. So you can copy those sorts of skills at yourself and put them into practice. Things like um, remembering people's names when, when you get in, you know, introduced to people, um, possibly complimenting people, uh, something about them. Don't, don't make it a false thing. Um, like it'd be very difficult to say to someone like Nissen, gee, Nissen, I really love your hairstyle. When, or, and similarly, so nobody could say that to me either. Um, so they've got to be genuine compliments. Um, and, and again, people were warm. People love to hear their own name. So again, remembering their names and using it uh, will, will help you immensely as well. Mm. So just quickly, I'll move on to the second topic. I'll only chop on two today, uh, today and we'll get more later. Um, now, I'm sure most of you have probably seen the movie on TV, What, what Do Women Want? And um, trying to think of the guys, the, the guy who starred in that, Mel, Mel Gibson. Um, and so how successful he was in, in being able to, in his case, he was listening to uh, the comments that were going through the minds of women. Um, and then he was just satisfying those thoughts. So in our case, what, why, why do clients do the things that they do? Why do clients do the things they do? Um, what, what makes them happy? Um, sometimes why, why sometimes they get angry? Um, and the answer is not easy, but psychologists have been working on these sorts of things for years. And to be successful, you, know how, you have to learn how to handle people properly and, and know what motivates them. So... Number one, when you're dealing with people, clients need to know that you're in control. Um, it's a bit like if, if you're in an aeroplane and something was happening with the aeroplane and the pilot came ran, running through the cabin away from the cockpit pit, um, that would probably make you feel a bit nervous. Um, but if you've ever been in an aeroplane and it's gone through some turbulence and that, and the captain's up the front and he's handling it and, and that makes you feel a lot more secure. And similarly, when you're dealing with clients, it's best, uh, no matter how drastic a situation might be, you've got to appear to be in control and, and make them aware of the fact that you are in control. It's a bit like the, uh, the duck on the, uh, on the pond, uh, the top that you see, is calm and under the water, the feet are going like crazy. Number two, clients need to feel that you're helping them. On Zoom. On Zoom. Clients need to know that you're um, helping them move towards their goal and that you, that's what you're, you're aiming for and that's, that's what you're there for. Um, make them feel confident and that you're moving in that direction. Uh, clients need reassurance that you're doing the right thing and that they're intelligent. Sometimes, and we've all experienced it, we obviously we have a huge amount of knowledge and our clients don't. And sometimes it can get very frustrating um, dealing with people when they're asking questions that 
are just mind boggling. And you, you, I often think to myself sometimes, you know, how do these people get out of bed of a morning and tie their shoelaces? Um, they're so, but you keep that to yourself. You always maintain a positive image and um, be, that'll, that'll go a long way with your clients. Make sure you treat your clients fairly and appropriately. Um, people, and we're all the same, we all want to feel good about people we interact with. So that's something you've got to keep in mind. A big one is clients want to know what's happening. The most common complaint, I believe, in our whole industry is the problem with communication. People are complaining that um, they don't get feedback or sufficient feedback from their broker. They don't know where the loan is at, that type of thing. Um, one of the, I actually shared yesterday with a, a young broker, one of Nissan's prime um, directives, and that is when he sends out an email to a client, he also sends out an SMS to say, dear client, I've sent you an email. And that eliminates the possibility that the client doesn't pick up on an email that you've sent out. So by this, if that's a little tip, always send an SMS to your client when you send out an email. You need to make sure your clients feel important. We all like to think that we are important. Make sure your clients feel appreciated dealing with you. Um, it's important to for everyone's the same. We, if, if you go into a shop to buy something and, and you feel that you're an inconvenience to, to the person serving you, uh, likelihood you won't go back. And it's the same in our business. Make sure you, you let your clients know how much they're valued and you appreciate their business. And that can extend sometimes to sending um, a small gift afterwards, a hamper, whatever. Um, so quickly, how do you meet all of your clients' needs? Starting off with the basic asking questions of them, which is good because, I mean, that's part and parcel of the bid. Listening to them. Now, I don't know, those of you who are married, men, um, how often do we get accused of not listening to our wives? And, um, yeah, sometimes we can be guilty of that. And the same thing with the client not just necessarily listening to what they're saying, but trying to comprehend what's behind what they're saying uh, can be more important than the words that they're saying. And lastly, pick up on nonverbal. Um, there's some really good books out there about nonverbal communication. Uh, a guy named Alan Pease is someone that I uh, had a meeting with uh, at a seminar years and years and years ago and he was brilliant and I have his book. Get the books, that will help you. All right, I've gone over time. I'm finishing over and out. Back to you, PJ. <laughs> Perfect time, you Steve, one minute to go. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank can, you. Can, I have, can I have that one minute, please, PJ? It's just uh, adding to what Steve just mentioned. Recently, I, uh, I mean, I, I use a CRM on top of the aggregator CRM that I use with Connective. Um, look, that, that's all well and good with uh, with our aggregators, but um, and on top of you want to provide more service to your clients, uh, you need to do more. So one of the, the CRM that I was using was Zoho. So I'm changing from Zoho to another uh, tool that Stephen introduced to me called uh, Sales Tracker. And I believe Rocco uses that as well. Um, uh, for the last two, three weeks, I've actually been sort of going through Sales Tracker. Today, I have another meeting with Amir to, to go through the Sales Tracker. But I'll really encourage you all to have a look at Sales Tracker. It does really um, well in communicating with your clients. Um, there's a free version, uh, not free version, sorry, a, a first plan, which is about $40 a month, which is nothing uh, in order for you to communicate with your clients. However, if you need more than uh, just communicating with your clients with the uh, product comparison and uh, uh, other um, information about the lender will cost you about $140. So it's really a good tool. Um, I'll, uh, once I use it, I'll, I'll you know keep everyone in touch a bit more with what's happening. But it's just that, you know, what Stephen mentioned, like you have to communicate with your client. The more that you communicate with your clients, 
you know, the more they remember you, that, that you're the broker to go to when they need the next finance. Good tip. I think it goes without saying that communication is key. And uh, we've talked about a number of tools today, and we, we have been talking about these tools probably ever since this whole uh, COVID stuff started and how to implement them in your business. So if for anybody that has any questions about that sort of stuff, I'm happy to tell you about how I use Loom. Uh, I'm sure Nissan, as you can you know, tell, he's got a lot of depth and breadth with different pieces of technology. So part of the reason that we're all in this organization in this group in particular is to help each other out and to get better at what we do, which is to be the top five, 10 percent of brokers in the industry. So um, certainly for mine, anyone that has any questions about how I use technology in my business, email, uh, email me, pj at keystonefinancial.com.au. Happy to have a chat. There's a number of people in this organization that are killing it with technology. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out and put your hand up and say, I need some help. There is nothing wrong with doing that. And if we can help make you better, that's our mission. That's why we're here. That's why I show up and do this uh, last Friday of every month. So um, with that, that'll be the last word from me. <laughs> Everyone have a fantastic weekend. I, I really hope you enjoy it. And uh, hopefully the weather will be nice. We'll see you at our next IFPF meeting, which I don't know the date off the top of my head, but guess what? It'll be the last Friday in September. So uh, we'll see you all then. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.